Yes, my name is Anthony Leben. You are welcome to today's edition of BD Sports. Uh, here with me is my friend and my regular host, Ibrahim Abubakar. Thank you for having me once again, Anthony. It's been a wonderful weekend and it's been a wonderful Monday um, afternoon. Mm, mm. Uh, you said a wonderful weekend. So what makes the weekend wonderful in terms of sporting activities, football? Well, you, you could see what's happened, what transpired over the weekend from Man City, Arsenal, and that the scare that um, Liverpool had, then the the game between Chelsea and Manchester United, yes, a couple of other games, you know, all across. Okay, let's start with um, Man City, Bournemouth. Uh, those guys, those Bournemouth guys, they're like the giant killers. Well, you know, uh, once upon a time it used to be brightening, um, but uh, in this ongoing season, you could see what um, they are doing. They did with Arsenal, mm -hmm. uh, they've done it with. Uh, Manchester City. Hopefully, someone somewhere will be able to, you know, clip their wings before they terminate every other big team in, in that um, yes, top six. Okay, terminate a big team's title ambitions. Are we? Exactly. You know, it gives now this helps. You know, it makes it the competitive um, league that is dubbed, you know, globally. That okay, the EPL is one of the most competitive league in the mm. in the world. And now seeing a Bournemouth with um, not even up to half of uh, Manchester City's budgets. You know, beating Manchester City and also you know dealing with Arsenal, it's it's a good for it's good for the league and it's good for the quality of uh, football. But again, people say because City right now they are struggling with injuries, so that could also play a part, you know, in their form. Do you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that. But uh, I sh I think it shouldn't be an excuse for a City team that has one of the best uh, football players or some of the best football players on and off the pitch. You know, um, um, De Bruyne and um, Rodri's um, absence should not be an excuse to not, you know, get in three points. You have, you, they, they did some business over before the season started and uh, they, they've probably played together to, for, for a while and they should be able to be beating the Bournemouth side. So, Man City struggling, yes, but it's not an excuse. They are currently second on the law. Do you think this defeat will be a blow to their title ambition? I doubt it because uh, Manchester City have proven times without numbers, especially when Arsenal are leading the table. They find a way to come back, deal with um, Arsenal and every other team. And they've lifted the trophy, I think, first time in a, in a row. So, this going into this uh, season, I, I, I don't expect them to, uh, anything less from them. I think they will be able to give anybody their offer. Them. They have the quality, they have the depth. They have the uh, bench. Wow, you mentioned Arsenal again. They lost to Newcastle. It's like a back to back defeat for them. And again, Arsenal fans were hoping that this season will be a new season of hope for them, you know, to challenge for the Premier League. But the way it's going, <laughs> do you think that, that hope is still alive? Uh, uh, I don't want to sound too, too rude or crude, but um, Arsenal will have to renew that hope next season because uh, they've been renewing, renewing this hope for years uh came first dropped to second came first dropped to second and we've seen it and currently they are not even in the top four we are we are having a, we are their fifth and we have a nottingham forest in, in on, on the third uh, you know so third position. third position so it begs the question of the quality of play of um Arsenal, what they want to achieve this is in my you might want to argue about uh, the depth of the squad but they have quality they've got the players so maybe it's a mental thing I don't know, but they will have to step up. Wow, even bright in against uh, Liverpool. Liverpool fought hard, but they were able to get the three points. So, like I said earlier, I know when we talk about the best, the best league in the world, it's not because they've got they produce most of the uh, best players in the world, but they've managed to make the league competitive, where a smaller team with less than twenty million pound budget going to the season can beat. A team that has spent over 200 million, you know, they can compete with them. Like I said, Nottingham Forest is playing, is currently third on the log, and you could see what they are doing in, in their style of play, quality of play, and not, you know, respecting any of those big teams. And they are taking the game to them. So, as it is, I, I'm not surprised. If anything, I think we need more of, of you know, upset like this, that, so that the league can also, you know, continue to bring. Uh, uh, competitiveness and also uh, change the trajectory of the traditional top four, top six. Mm. For now, as Liverpool they top the table, and as Lord, since it you know took over from Liverpool, they have been doing very well. Do you think this is might be Liverpool season? I think they have the shots. You know, when we started uh, before the season started, I, I mentioned some of the teams that uh, 
have the edge to win the EPL and I mentioned Liverpool because they have the squad too, they have the players, the golf quality and they, they, they brought in a manager that has been there, done that at least in, in the Netherlands, he was able to do something with Feyenoord and uh, coming to the, the EPL for the first time in his career, you know, to come manage a team that has the quality, been there, done that, played in Europe and also you know, won the, the EPL I think once in the last 10 years. So it's it's a core. I, I don't know what the the owner's but uh, target is for him, but I believe he's already getting the job done. Uh, well, yesterday was a cracker between you know, Chelsea and uh, Man U, and a lot of fans. It was for me. It was like a different Manchester United attitude, approach, intensity, style of play. Van Nistelrooy two match. That is, this is the second match, and one is saying that had they been United started like this, started the season like this. Apparently, they wouldn't be ready. Do you agree with that? No, I honestly don't agree with that because if you look at um, in every football season, you will see when a new manager is coming in or about to come, you see players bouncing back, probably you know, to get their shirts. They want to start. So the new manager is coming in, not knowing any of them, and probably seeing some of the, these things before he comes in and also in the uh, training ground. So I believe Manchester United, yes, in this game in itself, I, I felt let down. I feel like uh, the hype between Manchester United and Chelsea was not lived up to yesterday. Wow. wow because why? Chelsea were not able to play their normal football that we, we've seen this season. Mm -hmm. uh, Manchester United, too many mistakes. Ganache not 100% uh, with his game yesterday. So it was a little bit of uh, uh, stitches here and there. They were making mistakes on both ends. The first half was a total led. I think the goal, the, the penalty from um, Bruno, you know, open the, 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 the play a little bit, but um, before then, it was a very dull game. You could literally just slip off and you know, wake up and get back at it. And, uh, but wow. uh, Manchester United, they've improved at least. Rude, Rude has been able to you know, get the boys working. They've been able to show that, okay, there's quality in, this, in the team, and they can also give anybody a run for their money. When you say the game was a dull game, was I watching? For me, it was a fire-packed game. I saw it, you know, when you said Chelsea didn't play, Apparently, United didn't give them that room no, to operate. So, operate so for me, it was like an improved Man United side. And I felt that, for me, I don't think there was any rush to get Ruben Amri. I was thinking that in Nistelrooy, ex-player, who understand the philosophy of United. It has not started badly. So, with Amri coming in now, do you think has any, he will improve on the squad? Yeah, well, if you see, if you look at what Amri is doing with uh, Sports Lisbon, He's done a fantastic job, currently first on the, on the log. And he was even looking at, you know, finishing the season with um, Sporting before coming to Manchester. But they gave him that uh, ultimatum of either join now or no deal. So, um, he's, he's, he's proving that uh, he's a top-notch manager, you know, going against the likes of Benfica, Porto, and even Braga. It's not um, an easy task. And um, Rude has actually done a wonderful job in, in this Manchester United team. But, you know, the owners knows what they want. And I feel like uh, they're looking at what Liverpool has done. And see Anslaw's coming in and, you know, picking it up from very start. And they are doing a very wonderful job. Currently sitting first on the table. So, if you're looking at, uh, are we trying to, you know, trust the process or win someone that can just come in and, you know, get it kicking and uh, keep the ball rolling. So, I think that's what they, they're looking at. Let's get someone that is doing it currently, doing it well with his team. Let's bring him, bring him in. Let him know. Start from where he stopped with the other team and you know, keep us running for, if, my, if not the EPL, at least the top four. Manchester United are not where they are supposed to be. Okay, you talk about he did well, but if you look at the Portuguese league, no, he's, not, he's not in the rank of the top five leagues in Europe. So you coming into Premier League, I have my doubt, I could be wrong. Coming to the Premier League, very competitive. Uh, do you think him coming in will guarantee my United top four finish at the end of the season? No, I, I think it's a gamble. It's a 50 50 thing. But if you look at what Liverpool has done with Anslot, he was coming from the Netherlands. So he has never coached or managed anything. Anslot started the season with them. The yes, he started the season with them, but he was coming from but he had the to Netherlands. Time to prepare the team. But this one is just. So I believe they were also like firing squad. So I believe they will give him some time. We know we are also going for the international breaks here and there. And um, he will have time to, like, at least between when he's starting. 
for like say like um four or five games before i could ask okay this guy you've done five games what have what are you bringing into the team what are the quality that we should be expecting from you and i believe they will also be giving him an ultimatum this is what you're supposed to meet by the end of this season this is what we expected of you so if he meets that um, those demands i believe it will have been a very good season for them which i believe will probably be around being uh, coming top four going far in the in any of the domestic competition and also you know improving on their yeah yeah um fitness and they are also uh you know what they do in the, in the champions league how they perform they've drawn three of their games they've not won any so i think you want to improve on that performance and also keep the ball rolling from that um, uh, angle so mm, top be, four premier league you can't guarantee no no top four premier league you i believe will be what they will be demanding not the league not the league, not the okay. league yes. that's the benchmark for for, the for i believe yeah. yes yeah Okay, away from the Premier League, let's go straight to the Serie A. You know, we used to have our own boy, Osimen, week in, week out, but now he has gone to, you know, Turkish League. But we still have our own boy too, Ademola Lukman, doing exploit. Yesterday, he scored twice against Conte side, a formidable Conte side since he took over Napoli, they've been on fire. And the, the interesting thing is that Napoli lost 3-0. Lukman scored twice. And he continued from where he finished last season. You know, he recently uh, he was, you know, he finished 14th in the Ballon d'Or. And uh, currently, they even say in the 2024 Calf Player of the Year, hopeful. So, what can you say about Lukman's uh, performance? I think uh, Lukman's performance has improved over the years a whole lot. He has, he has probably you know, gone back to the drawing board and see where he can improve his play. And he's done that from, from last season. You could see the way they dismantled by a Bayer Leverkusen side that has never lost a game, which, by the way, are currently struggling in their own league. Mm -hmm. And you could see yesterday he, he, he stepped up and he, he made sure that the quality is shown that being number 14 in the world. It's not a fluke. Mm. He's getting the job done. And I think he's also not just the Nigerian, the only Nigerian, there, but I think the 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 you know, best African there. So which yes. which which we could use as a trajectory for the calf best uh, May player in on the continent. So he has continued for where he stopped last season. He keeps scoring goals and assisting. And um, yesterday Napoli lost at home. Their first loss at home. So he and he was you know, pivoted to that uh, loss. So Lukman's game has improved, fitness 100%, his dribble, his confidence, and his uh, finish uh, at point of goal. So I think he's gone for the calf, uh, man, best men player, and also improved as a player in total in general. So he's there to keep uh, Atlanta floating, I believe. I didn't think, uh, you know, you know, finishing 14th. And again, being you know in poor position to win the Cup Player of the Year award is a motivation for him because for now it's like it's like he's even preparing for the next one. What he's doing with the with the new season mm, now? Yes. Do you think that's a motivation for him? And do you see him, you know, playing on that season for Atlanta because a lot of clubs, you know, reportedly wanted him. Yeah, like you said, a lot of clubs reportedly wanted him before the beginning of this season, but somehow because even when those rumors were flying, he was not even a part of the team. At some point, Atlanta team was not in their first mm. second. I think they're about so it was not part of the team, it was not on the bench. We were thinking, okay, probably there's a deal or a deal has gone, you know, has been approved. But uh, before you know, it was brought back into the team, you know, infused into the team, and everything was just playing fine for him. So I believe this is a motivation for him. What is the best you can do on the continent? Win the uh, African Cup of Nations and also be, you know, we crown the best player in, uh, on the continent. So. Nigeria got second, I think, uh, uh, last at last yes. AFCON, mm -hmm. and he was pivoted to our getting to that yeah, um, that stage. Point. So he had a, a good a good um, outing there. So also, um, you know, taking it to club level, he's done. He's performed for Atlanta last season. You know, literally gave them the uh, the the European uh, Community, uh, Cup. Now he's doing the same thing this season. So I feel last season and cover as public cover for this year's calf. What he's doing now is for the following and it's also a good thing on the, for the Nigeria as uh, for Nigeria as a country. You know, when you look at Osime being the last uh, older of the best player yeah, on the, the continent. So now coming to Nigeria again, I think the last time we had something like this was during Kanu's time there about. So now we're having a Nigerian coming back to back. It might not be the same player, but at least we have Nigeria yeah, yeah. on the on the map coming back to back. And there is a very certain uh, there is a very uh, it's looking certain that we might even have Nigeria for like 
two, three straight years, there's a bunny phase that is also yes. improving, that is also playing a good football yes. with Leverkusen yes. and Lukman. So I think these two, then uh, obviously the, the old Trafal saga with Osime has not really brought out the best in him. And, we, and I believe he still have one or two more years to, to give us something very concrete. And that's well, it. Well, I was going to go into Osime. He moved to the Turkish uh, league and has been doing fantastically well. But again, now uh, there's a story that came up yesterday, late night, saying that the, uh, you know, Galatasaray are willing to pay 55 million to sign Osime. It's like they don't want him to leave. But Osime, with his caliber of player, do you think the Turkish league is the best for him? So, for as an AG, and I'll say it's not the best for him, but currently I think it is the best for him. So, generally for his career, I would say he should move to one of the top. He's played in France, he's played in Italy, and I'm sure he can and he would do wonderfully well in the EPL. But if he's not looking at the EPL, he can always move to Germany. And he has also played in Germany before, you know, starting his career. So, I think uh, what he has done, if you look at the contracts or some of the information we have about the contracts he signed with Galatasaray, he, he reduced um, his uh, buyout clause. With Napoli, you could use the bar clause. In, you, you, there was also an option to leave in January if he yeah, wants to. Wants to be yeah, but recently uh, there was a video that circulated the uh, social media, especially Twitter, where a fan of Galatasaray was asking him if he would stay to the end of the year, and he was like, "Yes, I will stay to the end of the season." But uh, we, we know how, how this thing works. If uh, Galatasaray depends on Ikadi, not to Sime, so and Ikadi, you know, is aging. That is something. So. It could easily be the replacement for Icardi, but uh, I feel he should step out, you know, probably come to the EPL or go elsewhere where we can easily watch his match, watch him week in, week out, and put him back on the map and, uh, you know, kick it from there. Well, if, if he's not getting offers from the Premier League, so what the, That means he's trapped. So I feel it's a player of his caliber. Like, Napoli doesn't want him. No, and, uh, uh, so, so, and I feel like he's Napoli having. Is doing well at, uh, uh, at Napoli. Napoli. So I believe he's doing. Uh, he's, he's, he will be having offers. He had offers before uh, you know, joining um, Galatasaray on loan. Just I think Galatasaray offer uh, the Galatasaray deal was to like take me away from this mess. Let me have you know a rethink. Let me build on my confidence. Let me have a mental uh, a mental uh, state of uh, health that is very stable. Then we cannot move from there. I think that is why in the contract there was, you know, an option to leave in January. So you have like six months thereabouts to plan, think about his life. And he's, as you can see, he's also changed his uh, agent. So all these things, I believe, is a work in progress towards him moving out of um, Galatasaray. Wow. Uh, let's move straight to the Champions League. Uh, action resumes tomorrow. Uh, is a new expanded the Champions League. We have six teams and the uh, uh, we have some interesting matches uh, lined up for tomorrow. Real Madrid, they've been struggling. They're playing, you know, they're hosting AC Milan, Liverpool, Leverkusen, Daily Juventus. And let's start with Real Madrid, AC Milan. They, had a, uh, they were supposed to play this weekend, but because of the flood in Spain, in Malaysia, they could not play. But prior to that, last, uh, last two weekends, they lost woefully to Barcelona in El Clasico. And they struggled in this Champions League. They're not even the first eight. What are their chances against AC Milan? AC Milan too have struggled too. I think they even have a worse season in the Champions League. So, okay. what are their chances against AC Milan? Yeah. So, uh, I think uh, Real Madrid have the edge, but these two teams they have uh, history in the Champions League. I think uh, when you talk about Champions League in Italy, you call AC Milan. Yeah. When you talk about Champions League in Spain, Correct. you bring Madrid. So, yeah. So uh, these two teams have their, they, they have history in this competition. But if you look at Real Madrid over the years, they he always struggled at some point, but they always find that uh, motivation to at least get all three points or that get that necessary uh, need that win. They need to like so the, the 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 caliber of player they have, they have the quality. They necessarily do not play as a team at some point, but they find a way to like you know come out top of their group of the competition and all of that. And they are, they are, they are currently the the title holder, so. I believe they will, they will get a three point against a, Milan, a, a struggling Milan. Well, how about uh, Liverpool against our own uh, Boniface by Liverpool? Well, Leverkusen is also struggling. <laughs> <laughs> so you could see over the weekend, I think they lost over the weekend. Yeah. And before that, 
So since they lost, I guess Atlanta last season, been, coming into the yeah, season, they've, they've been struggling. Themselves. They've not been themselves, losing here and there, dropping unnecessary points. Mm. They lost to uh, I think Leipzig. They have all, all all that are compassion, and I think the players, you know, the the energy they put into their game last season is quite catching up with them. The, the fitness, fatigue, and all of that. Um, and then Boniface was practically their top nine. You know, had an accident and yeah. he came back from that accident. And I'm not sure he's 100 percent fit, but they they brought him on last weekend. He scored a goal, but they still drew or lost that game. So it's they are struggling. Liverpool is top of the EPL, yeah, so they, they they have the edge. Liverpool have the edge to you know get all three points at least a draw. So Liverpool still have to do more than necessary to at least get a point from this game. So you're tipping Liverpool. Liverpool too, yes, get all well, three points. Another interesting one is uh, Sporting CP. Uh, mind you, being handled by mind you, incoming oh, manager Cordida, yeah. against uh, Pep Guardiola's side. One would say that it's like the rivalry is starting from here. Yeah. <laughs> and after here, they will not take it to so, Premier League. Uh, yes. So what are the chances? Well, I will still give it to the Manchester City side. Mm -hmm. You know, when last time, the last time we were here, we talked about Man City playing. Uh, uh, I think Sparta Praga, and uh, we're talking about Sparta Praga, one of the team, best team in the Czech uh, Republic. But um, we saw what happened at, uh, in that game. So Man City took them to the cleaners. And uh, if we're not talking about uh, Sporting CP, like you said, they are not even top five league in the, in Europe. So and you're playing against a, a Manchester City side that has a Pep Guardiola, that has an, an Haaland, and a host of other you know quality players. So uh, I'm worried we should be taking note from now on how to play Manchester City side. So coming to Manchester United. So I believe uh, Manchester should be getting all three points. Wow, familiar face and head of state. Thank you so much for having you on my show. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you very much for having me. Yeah, hello show. viewers. We've come to the end of today's uh, BD TV Sports Edition. We hope you have enjoyed our show. Uh, we we'll promise you to look forward to our next edition. Hopefully on Wednesday we'll talk about the upsets in the Champions League and the weekend, you know, previews and all of that. And for now, we'll say thank you.